Okay, so now we're gonna take, this is our stock air tube that went from our air filter to our air box. And factory, this top part here is what attaches to the air filter. Well, we're gonna take and we're gonna use the piece that attached to the air box and we're gonna turn that around. And now this is gonna be the inlet to the air box and we're gonna slip this air tube that we provide you in up through here and this is gonna get turned. So then this can pretty much slip into the setup like this and go into the turbo. And then we're gonna also use this adapter with these are the two clamps for it. So this part will go onto the turbo, this part will go onto the air tube into here. And then we can set that all up just like that. So we'll go ahead and put this in the buggy now and show you how it fits. All right, next we're gonna take and uh, set up our breather filter here. So we just went ahead and put our rubber grommet into the bottom of the filter, uh, tightened up the clamp. And then this is gonna attach to the stock breather hose that was attached to the air intake tube. Um, we're just gonna disconnect that, use the same hose clamp that was on stock, stick this in the hose. And then we're just gonna simply zip tie this up and away from the header, usually about somewhere over here. Um, but we can do that after we get all the other intakes on and the clutch guard and everything. But that's gonna be something like that, attached with the, with the clamp, just like that. So now we are gonna take and uh, take our stock throttle bodies. We took them off, cleaned them up a little bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and drill and tap an eighth inch NPT pipe tap hole in uh, this uh, PTO side throttle body. So what we're gonna do is, to start, we're gonna take a 3 16 drill bit, and we're gonna drill all the way through with 3 16 to start our hole. And then we're gonna take a Q size drill bit, which is the size for the uh, eighth inch pipe tap uh, tap, and we're only gonna run that down to about here, so that we're not going all the way through the hole with the big drill bit. We're only gonna go deep enough that we need our threads, and then the through hole will be 3 16 So we'll go ahead and drill our first hole. Okay, so now we have our first hole drilled right through. You can see it's just a little hole that goes through, and that's all the size hole we wanna drill through into the throttle body. Now, like I said before, we'll take and run our Q size letter drill bit down to about my fingernail, and we'll tap that with the eighth inch MPT pipe. Okay, so there's our second hole drilled and you see how we only went down and stopped so that'll be the pre-drill for the threads okay so now we've got our map sensor adapter here which is this is the map sensor that comes with the pc5 kit notice it's different than the stock map sensor looks very similar but don't get them confused because you will have big issues if you switch those two don't even move remove this one from the throttle bodies um, so we got our sensor here and adapter which was provided so we're just going to go ahead and screw this right in like this, and this is going to run just like this on the motor. Okay, so now when it's all installed, it should look something like that. And now we're done with the throttle bodies, we can set them back to the side, and we can go ahead and finish. Alright, so now with our breather installed and air tube on, we're going to go ahead and work on putting the air box on with the secondary fuel rail and all the tie downs. So as you can see, uh, the bottom bolt here is going to go right through here. It's going to be the 3 8 bolt we gave you in the kit. And um, we also have the under pulled down piece, which you can see here. Um, we just basically took the uh, stock coolant housing bolt out. Whoops. All right, so now with the compressed with the coolant housing bolt installed, we still have these two bolts loose so that we can wiggle our air box around and get it positioned correctly. What we want to achieve is the throttle bodies being straight into the motor. So if we, if we bend them down or push them up, it'll put too much stress on the, on the stock boots and they could possibly rip. So we want to make sure that the throttle bodies are nice and comfortable, everything's nice and set, and all the rubbers are nice and perfect onto the holes. So that's what we want to look for and also good clearance onto the top of the fuel rail and uh, on the bottom to the bolt. So we'll go ahead and snug up all our bolts now that we got everything 
kind of positioned how we like. Okay, so now we have our throttle body clamps all tightened. We have our lower mount tightened, our bolts down here to the mount tightened, and our backside lower motor or uh, lower plenum mount tightened. So now everything's all good and solid. Our throttle bodies, as you can see, perfectly in a straight line, just how we want them. A good good clearance on top of the throttle body or on top of the fuel rail, excuse me. And so now we are ready to go ahead and install the intercooler and start we have to do a few little body modifications to get that in we got to drill one hole we got to do a little shaving so we'll go ahead and remove this upper air cover here real quick just a single bolt here slides off so you see here this is this is the inlet for the uh, clutch all right as you can see it gets pretty nasty under there you want to that clean and then the other thing we're going to remove is this cover right here so looks like it's about a 25 torx or a 30 and we'll go ahead and remove this cover all right so now with our intercooler test fitted you can see we have to cut this hole this hole right here to let our okay so now we got our hole all cut out we're just going to go ahead and clean off the burrs and the next thing we're going to work on is drilling our hole for our charge tube in the cab here so you want to just take your time and line it up. See, so I kind of got it marked out of where I want to do it. We basically just want to line the center of the circle of the output of this up. And we want to just be in the center, front and back. And you're going to want to drill, I would recommend at least a two inch hole saw hole here. Our, char our charge tube is only inch and a half, but we have a piece of rubber and we want to have a little bit of movement because the whole engine is rubber mounted. So you have to give it a little room to be able to make it move through its motion as the buggy is underway. So we can go ahead and get this hole drilled. And the other thing you wanna remember is you wanna stick a rag down in this turbo so all that plastic and stuff don't fall right into your turbo before you even start your machine. All right, so now with our hole drilled out, we are gonna take our straight charge tube and we're gonna just go ahead and stick that in. And we're just gonna go ahead and mock up all of our charge tube set up with all of our rubber and just kinda of have our clamps in place and then once we have everything hooked up and everything's all installed, then we can go ahead and start tightening it all down once everything is, we're happy with the fitment of it. So it's going to start with that tube. The next tube we're going to go and put the intercooler back in with the rubber 90s on it. Okay, so now we got our intercooler back installed and we have our rubber 90s pushed on. So you can see here, comes down, comes around. Okay, so now we've got our charge tubes all in, connecting to our air box here. And we have our top 90 on, and so now we just have to put our last charge tube in, which is gonna be this one. All right, so now we have our top charge tube in place. And as you can see, it connects up, goes around. We installed this clamp here to sturdy everything up. Got it going into there. All of our bends are nice. Clamps are nice and square. So now that we have everything all tightened up, the last things we have left to do are install our clutch guard back on and put in our electronic tuner. So getting close. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is get the tuner in and then we'll put the clutch guard and stuff back on and be ready to fire. We also gotta do the fuel line too for the, uh, for the secondary fuel rail. So we're going to take and install our fuel line now. So this is our fuel injection hose, our T's and our clamps. So first thing we'll do is just push our hose onto our fuel rail. And then we're going to just take and cut the stock line, install the T and crimp it all together with the clamps. And we'll be all set. Okay, so now we have our hose cut, our T installed, and our secondary fuel rail all hooked up. So now the last things we have left to do is install our electronics and put our clutch guard back on. All right, so now here's our power commander. And basically we can follow these instructions included with the power commander with only one slight change. Instead of just simply changing your injector plugs, you have to do that still. You have to plug your stock plug where the injector was plugged into into this hole. And then you'll have to plug the stock injectors back into this plug and then the only difference is going to be is you have two more plugs 
for your secondary injectors. So these are going to be for the secondary injector rails, and they're obviously marked PTO and MAG. MAG is the, uh, the stator side or passenger side if you're looking from the rear of the vehicle. PTO is power takeoff or the clutch side. And that's the only real difference. This gray wire, we have to splice into the uh, dark green wire on the TPS plug, which is done with this little gizmo right here. You just basically slip the wire in between, pit, pierce the casing, and then slide your top wire in. And then you have your data cable and all the instructions and everything. Okay, so now we have our PC5 all hooked up. Um, we basically ran our wires over top of the sway bar, down through the way. Um, this is the ground. This needs to be hooked up down to the chassis ground right there, where all the other wires are going. Um, basically, one wire goes to the ignition coils. Uh, one wire goes to the PC5 map sensor that we installed earlier. Um, one set goes to the injectors and the secondary injectors. And the final plug is gonna go down to the crank sensor. Uh, so once you have all those uh, buttoned up and tidied up, um, we're pretty much done. We got our clutch guard backer back on. Okay, so now we have our PC5 all installed. We're gonna, we went ahead and hooked up our ignition coil, our, our chassis ground, and our uh, PC5 map sensor. And then we also hooked up our stock injectors, our secondary injectors. And you see through the PC5, it basically takes one side, the stock plug goes into one side of the PC harness, and then goes out to the stock injector. And then our secondary injectors get hooked there. And then we run one more wire over to the crank sensor. And that's pretty much the PC5 set up for the basic kit. And with the clutch guard reinstalled, we're pretty much done with the kit. Now we just have to reinstall our clutches and away we go.